Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we'll be going through this paper which is titled as Combining BERT with Static Word Embeddings for Categorizing Social Media. It's from authors from Cardiff University, UK. And this work got accepted as a part of six workshop on noisy user-generated text and will be presented in 2020 EMNLP workshop. Okay, so let's go through the paper. So before I start, I would just like to say if you like such content, do share it with your friends. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also do let me know in the comments and link to the papers that you would want me to read next. Okay, so the authors say pre-trained neural language models have achieved impressive results on various natural language processing tasks across different languages. Surprisingly, this extends to social media genre despite the fact social media often has very different characteristics from the language that language models have seen during the training. Yeah, so this is very true because the language models such as BERT and all those things, right? So these are usually trained on really large corpus of structured text, such as text from Wikipedia, Common Crawl, Archive, and all those things, which have a pretty decent language structure. Unlike the text that usually you see in social media, where the posts usually tend to be really short and concise and often have the abbreviations because of the word limit or the character limit that they introduce. They have slang words, they'll have misspellings, They'll have emoticons. And not only these, they'll also have various dialects. So this shows a discrepancy in the training set and the test set. The distribution is a little different. So that's why these models that are already trained on Wikipedia and stuff find hard time to kind of scale and to generalize on these kind of test sets. So this paper essentially introduces a technique to how you can use pre-trained models along with static word embeddings that are corpus specific to achieve reasonable performance on social media text. A particularly striking example is the performance of Arabert, a language model from Arabic language, which is successful in categorizing social media posts in Arabic dialects, despite only having been trained on modern standard Arabic. Okay, so somewhere in the paper, I guess, okay, yeah, over here, they have written, in particular, the Arabic language can be divided into classical Arabic, modern standard Arabic, and dialectal Arabic. And the dialectal Arabic essentially differs from different Arabic countries, sometimes and regions as well as cities. So that's what they mentioned, like Arabert, one of the models that was trained for Arabic language, generalizes well on different dialects, even being just trained on standard Arabic text. So I guess they should be telling something about this in the paper, like what this model actually is. So at that time we'll see this. Their hypothesis is that the performance of a language model can be improved by incorporating a standard word vectors that have been specifically trained on social media. Yeah, so this is very true like for any NLP or any image, any kind of a task, if you train word vectors that are specific to your domain, but yeah, that comes with a challenge like you should have enough data at the first place. Otherwise, you won't be generalizing much. You will be having out of vocabulary errors and all those things. We show that the simple method for incorporating search word vectors is indeed successful in several Arabic and English benchmarks. Okay, let's read further. In particular, Arabert has achieved state-of-the-art results in sentiment analysis, named entity, question answering, and many others. Arabert was trained in Wikipedia and news stories. Okay, so this is the major corpus on which Arabert was trained. So Arabert is basically a BERT model and it's trained on two objectives, which is the original objective of BERT, which is mass language modeling and next sequence prediction. So the corpus for that was taken from Wikipedia and news stories. And which is very obvious, like since you're taking curated text, you'll not see Arabic dialects over there, which is one of the prominent things that you'll see in social media posts. So the authors from Arabert paper include a method that uses Arabic embeddings, which uses word to vec vectors trained on Twitter had wide coverage on the dialect words okay so what they're saying is the authors trained two models one was a word to vec model other was arabert model so arabert was trained on huge corpus such as wikipedia and news stories so with this model has learned the nuances of arabic languages how it's usually written and the language structure then they also trained a word to vec model from Arabic text that they scrape off from Twitter social media to capture the other segment which is about dialects and the nuances that are specific to social media such as spellings, acronyms and all those things. So you have a word embeddings that are corpus specific but are based from 
word to vehicle algorithm so this essentially is a deterministic algorithm now you will have a lookup table where you have vocabulary and certain dimension let's say 100 dimension of a vector and when you want to do it at an inference time you would call that table look for that row and take all the column vectors from there and they don't account for any polysemy so you'll have just one fixed vector representation for every word from the twitter corpus okay the authors propose the hypothesis to why arabert and arabic when combined give better results and they say the way the arabert and arabic work together and have complementary strengths this should also work if you change the language let's say if you consider the english language that's what they have written we would expect the performance of the bird on social media can be improved by incorporating the word embeddings that have been trained on social media however for english we would expect to see a smaller effect compared to arabic because the vocabulary of the english social media is more or less similar to the vocabulary of the traditional sources so that's what they have written like for arabic the dialectal vocabulary that you see is pretty different from the standard arabic text that's why there was a huge performance boost that you saw when you combine generalized model and a corpus specific embeddings but for english they didn't expect much of a boost because the vocabulary is pretty common the intersection is really high if you talk about words in wikipedia and words in social media there would be many nuances in terms of extra things that people usually use in social media but the very common terms would be occurring in the similar context so to test these hypotheses authors propose a simple classifier that combines language models which is the bird with static word embeddings which is nothing but word to vec okay now let's see the architecture okay so this is the architecture that the authors propose so as you can see you have a concatenation layer where you'll concatenate output from the bird embeddings and output from the static word embeddings so what they do is you have pre-trained bird which is base uncased you pre-train it on the twitter data what you get and at the output end where you get all the token level embeddings and also a cls vector you ignore the cls vector and just consider all the token level embeddings do a average pooling basically you do an average at column level for all the embeddings if an embedding dimension is let's say 768 so you'll be getting a final vector which is 768 vector representation where each of the cell value is a averaged over each of the cells for all the tokens that you have so with this you'll get a sentence representation that is based out of BERT embeddings at the end let's call it S on the other hand where they talk about static word embeddings they have already trained a word to vec model on the twitter data so as to grasp all the nuances that are specific to any social media so now you have a word level embedding at this position they apply a CNN over this they also play around and test out how well RNN works in this case so the idea is to get a sentence representation post CNN or post LSTM layer. So once you have sentence representation from this block as well, let's call it S1. And you also have a sentence representation from little generalized model. Let's call it S2. You concatenate both of them. And let's say the left one gave you a 100 dimension representation. The right one will give you a 768 dimension. So after concatenation, you will be having 868 dimension representation for that sentence that captures social media specific nuances from the left pipeline and a generalized language dependent features from the right pipeline you apply a dropout and then you have a classification layer which is nothing but a linear followed by a sigmoid so this is the full architecture that they propose also somewhere in the paper i read the right pipeline which is talking about the bird fine tuning pooling and average this is taken up as a separate task where you first fine tune BERT so that it becomes static and no more weights would be altered. So the right pipeline basically acts as a mapping that doesn't change over further training once it's trained. So now the weights that gets updated based on back propagation are the weights of CNN and the weights of this classification layer. So this is the architecture that the authors propose. Also somewhere in the paper, author justified why they didn't simply concatenate static word embeddings and bird embeddings the reason was the bird essentially tokenizes at sub word level so the output that you get from the bird need not necessarily be at the word level but at sub word level as well so it doesn't make sense to simply concatenate that stuff with the word level embeddings that you have so a possible solution for that could be let's say we have an input size that is of l length after you tokenize it it becomes L into M 
where m is greater than or equal to 1. So this is the input that you give to the bird and output end you also get a similar representation which is l into m. Here if you see if m is equal to 1 all the words were there in the pre-trained vocabulary of the bird. So if l was 10 words you output 10 words on the other end. If there was out of vocabulary scene bird would basically do a sub tokenization of that word and increase the input length. So that is what I have defined using m. So if m is equal to 2, this means all the words in the input were not there in the pre-trained bird. So every word let's say would tokenize into two tokens. So you have two L tokens as the input and at the output you'll be getting a two L token representations. So that is the main idea. So let's move forward. Now they have experiments and all. For English, specifically they tested on iron dataset, offensive language detection task, stance detection, hate speech detection. So for the datasets where they didn't have a standard split, they did a 80-20 train and test split. They also applied a couple of pre-processing steps that are very specific to Twitter, such as removing emojis, hashtags, numbers, special characters, punctuation. So all of these were trimmed off and they applied certain masking schemes such as user mentions were masked with this token, URLs were masked with this tokens, and email addresses with this token. They removed all the non sky characters, converted emoticons to text, and applied a contraction to basically get to the full form. So contraction is like if you have wheel, it basically switches that to we will. So all these things were applied and post that the pipeline that we just discussed was executed. They experimented with Skipgram and SIBO, which are two algorithms how you train what to vec with the dimensions of 100 and 300. So that's pretty much I guess. Then they have the numbers. So for English, as you can see, if you just train a CNN model with the embeddings as glove Twitter, these are the scores that you get. I believe these are F1. Yeah, so these are F1 scores that you get. So if you just use BERT model, which means you already fine tuned it on their respective data sets, these are the numbers. As you can see, there's a huge increase that you see in the stance model and irony model. The third experiment was to test out with CNN bird and then LSTM bird. The only difference that is making over here is the embeddings that you train. So all of these are like based on Twitter and they also experimented with if we go about just training a glove model on Wikipedia as in static embeddings, then how the performance would be. Okay. So I guess we are done with the paper. Now they have the conclusion and all. So I would say it was a pretty uh, interesting read. Uh, one experiment that I would want to do over this would be instead of taking a single representation of embedding for any static word embeddings model such as word to vec or glove, what about if we consider meta embeddings at that point of time? So that would also kind of give us the privilege to utilize the learnings from different model. So what do I mean by this? So let's say you have fast text, you have glove, you have word to vec, you have paragraph. So all of these embeddings, if you kind of do an average or any kind of pooling, or if you concatenate, apply PCA so that everything is on the same dimension. So any kind of technique to kind of merge all these embeddings and create a meta embedding model rather than just using glove at this point, how would the scores get affected? So that is an interesting experiment, I feel. Nevertheless, it was a good read. So if you like such content, do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to not miss out any video that I post in the future. I'll meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.